So, a bunch of you send a bunch of uh, tweets and comments on Facebook and stuff, and universally, they were, I'm going to miss Mike and Cameron mm. being on Twitch streams. Yeah. And we thought, well, how do we double down on this? Easy. We jack up the stakes and we add a Dara yep. to the pile. Okay. The and most this important time, one. This time, he is in full of plague. I am not Nor full of plague. I, so we're all good. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, welcome to the marathon. Uh, we are going to be basically not just streaming the game because there's tons of reasons you'd want to, you know, take, check out Inquisition. I know a bunch of people are using all kinds of obscure VPNs and stuff to be playing on Origin and stuff right now. Good I for you. Encourage them. Well, whatever, man. It's give VPN. instructions. Okay. Um, and you'll want to route your ports. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that's happening. There's streams going on. That's cool. Why here? Here's a good question. Uh, we're going to be doing kind of a marathon, hopefully, spoiler, super light. There'll be a tiny bit, obviously, start of the game, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but what we're going to be focusing on is bringing in a, kind of a rolling crew of different devs, different members of the team, uh, folks from the community. Yep. Uh, I think we have we have our voice actress for Josephine here. Yep. She'll be joining us. Um, so we're going to bring them all in and uh, get a, an awesome chance for you guys to get some behind-the-scenes commentary. Um from these two, especially in the beginning, because I'm going to be apparently making an elf by request. The pretty one, hence Cameron, doesn't have the controller. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> just, he just gets the shotgun of makeup and yeah. there, that's, that's attractive. Yeah. It, saves, it saves Cam a lot of time in the morning. Right? <laughs> it really does, <laughs> it's, yeah. It's how you get that fresh face. Yeah, You've yeah. had a haircut, too. I have, it's yeah. It's like a fade. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, so... Launch day, you got to look sexy. <laughs> now, uh, at a high level, uh, here's the thing. Uh, Reviews are out. They've yes. been really good. Yep. Uh, so far, we're, yep. we're happy. Um, uh, looks like day one sales start today, uh, tonight, you know, kind of midnight Eastern time, typically. Uh, a group of us here in Edmonton are going to be at Southgate Mall. We're going to do some signings and stuff. That's going to be kind of fun. Mm -hmm. But some of you may not know what Dragon Age is and may be signing in. And we're going to kind of bounce through a couple of these key points as we go through the day, just in case you're signing in and go, well, I've heard about this thing. What is it? What can you tell us about it? And so on. So um, what we're going to do right now is I'm going to dive into making a character. And then uh, these two are going to talk about kind of the high level game. And again, if you've heard this before, thanks for sticking with us. I'll make sure there's pretty elf going on. Yeah. Pretty okay. elf going on. Okay. Pretty elf. All right, Mark, do you want to... Yeah, so Dragon Age Inquisition, this is the third Dragon Age in the series. Um, Dragon Age Origins, Dragon Age 2 uh, preceded it. Uh, this game, it takes place with a new character. Uh, as you can see... Whoops, hitting my microphone. As you can see, we're starting here with the an explosion, uh, which has actually torn open the breach. Um, I don't think we're playing the prologue right now, so I'll give you a little bit of context there. Uh, just a little bit. So you're the only survivor of this explosion, and basically what you're doing over the course of the game is figuring out how to stop this explosion, which is slowly tearing open the veil between our world and the world of demons, uh, and then figuring out who's behind it and putting a stop to that. Yep. All within this big open world, sort of multi-region open world, I should say, you know, with these huge environments with like deserts and swamps and mountains, like you see here. So yeah, lots of exploration as well as that sort of Bioware storytelling that we're Everyone and it, and loves. As, if, as if that's not enough, you can also go online with your friends. You can, multiplayer yeah. as well. Multiplayer, cooperative yes. multiplayer. And in yep. fact, we're going to be showing that off. I'm just looking to see when. 11.15, uh, uh, it looks like. 11.15, holy no, cow, yeah, the multiplayer uh, yeah. guys are going to come in. They're going to be playing on the Xbox One. So, now, we're playing on the PlayStation 4 for today. Oh, yes, right. Um, I think we'll be switching throughout the day. PC, yeah, we're definitely switching platforms. a lot. Yep. Um, PC in the end of the day, right? Sorry? PC for the end of the day, I think. PC, PC at some point. Um, and so this is the most complicated charge in we've ever done. Uh, mm -hmm. So hopefully Mike does not get lost as we go. When you uh, say complicated, what do you mean? I mean it's the most in-depth thing we've ever done. So we've got uh, control over things like uh, uh, general stuff, like head shape, but also going in as deep as controlling the color of both your outer and inner iris color, as Mike is doing here. Uh, so if you really want to get that detail in there, this is... Uh, really letting you do that. Yeah, and I think there's something to be said for actually being able to create the character that you want, right? Like, fantasy fulfillment, um, it's going to be different for everyone. So, you know, if you want to be male or female, or if you, you know, if you want to have um, be a, a canary or a dwarf or, you know, different skin tones, different hair, uh, it's all about being able to create the, the Inquisitor that suits you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is either, either you're, you're building something that... I mean, you're going to be playing this character for a long time, so it's worth a little bit of an investment for someone that you can stand to look at 
yep. uh, and enjoy the experience of uh, interacting um, with other people with them. Because, uh, yes, you're going to be having a lot of conversations with a lot of followers. <laughs> yeah. There's all the eye positions and stuff, which is pretty cool. Yeah, this is actually nice amazing on, stuff. On yeah. a different on a different scale rather than just position, position, position. Yeah. Um, and ultimately, this gives you a lot finer control. Of course, on the PC, you'd be doing this by clicking your mouse. You can sort mm -hmm. of move this thing around. Yep. Uh, and also, if you have any questions, uh, obviously you can put them in the, the Twitter chat. Uh, uh, not Twitter chat. What are we on? Twitch. Twitch chat. <laughs> uh, but also, you can tweet them uh, using the DAI, DAI, AI hashtag. I need my coffee. Hang on. I can't talk yet. Yeah, there I, you go. I actually haven't had a coffee today. How so. can you not have wow, a coffee? Wow, you're just powered by will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's going to go. It's going to get dark. The odds of me killing you two are actually pretty high. Yeah. I'm yeah. Be honest. It yeah. is hot in here, so that's yeah. going to really shorten everyone's... Uh, uh, tempers, I suspect. It's, it's because Mike just radiates heat. There is that. I a am wearing Adam, a big shirt. Animal magnetism. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guys. Later, later, I'm going to check my sheet. I believe there's oil wrestling. <laughs> uh, wow. Cameron and I, not in the same weight category. <laughs> no. So, so that's... I, I get scrappy, though. You know, all me up, I'll, like, slither around everywhere. <laughs> Wow, this is taking a dark <laughs> turn. Really we has. are now three minutes into the stream, was... and we've taken a dark, dark turn. Thank you for tuning in to yep. <laughs> Dragon Age Inquisition After Dark. The um, pretty sure the new ch the new rules on Twitch are none of that. Uh, yes. Yeah. I didn't even know that there was that sort of stuff going on, but apparently it's. it's You're just watching. You yeah. realize you've been watching the wrong streams on. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, God damn it! Wasted my life. Uh, so, so what color hair are you going to go for, um, I think I'm going to go for this kind of like awesome... You really like the redheads, red. huh? Well, me and the bull, right? Yeah. There we go. I always find that the short hair looks really awesome on the elves because of the... the of ears? Because of ears, really. Yeah. Nice. Um, my tail's kind of classic. So, uh, hey, everyone, if you're tuning in just there now, because we're off. just after 10 minutes... Um, this is the launch stream for Dragon Age Inquisition. We'll be going from, uh, um, well, from now until um, 4 p.m. Uh, PST tonight. Uh, what we're doing is we're going to be playing the game not as a live stream. We're going to be jumping around and showing different parts of the game. We're going to be bringing in different devs throughout the day to give you a behind-the-scenes look at some, some of the decisions we made and, um, and uh, really how this kind of game gets made. So... On that topic, Mark, um, do you want to talk a little bit about the player races coming back in? Yeah, so um, we have four races in Dragon Age Inquisition. You can play, obviously, as a human, uh, the elf you can see on screen here, and dwarves and canari. Um, what we really wanted to do is bring back the ability to play the character that you want it to be. Um, this is uh, letting you play as uh, various racial fantasies. Uh, while lots of people... Well, dwarves, for example, aren't the largest uh, chosen race. They, they are so passionate. Right? They are so passionate yeah. about their choices. So we wanted to make sure those people had available. Uh, by introducing Canari, what we're doing is we're giving, um, hopefully, what will begin start to be um, a new uh, standard for people in terms of what they're looking for in a fantasy game—a big, hulking brute um, that uh, that really can you can form your own stories around. Yeah, and with a quite a particular sort of mentality as well, the Canari. Yeah. Um, now, in the case of uh, player race, uh, when you're playing as Canari, you're actually playing as Tal Vashoth. Um, wow, just I'm going to throw out the the uh, apostrophe words really early in the stream. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so that meaning that you actually are not a member of the Kuhn. You're not uh, You're not raised within the, uh, the really specific uh, philosophy of the Canari. I'm terrified of makeup too. I'll be honest, Cam. So right, it's not it's easy. Not you know what else? You know what else is not easy? Working when you don't have eyebrows. It's like, wait, wait, there. Yeah, That's what was weirding me out. You, yeah. I mean, this is this is such a detailed system. This character creation. So here's here's one of the biggest. This one's this one I think is probably the most important. I just hope I can is, help. Of course, being able to change as long the as two the different accents. Done. Yes. Yeah, yeah. About the rest. yeah. Really happy about this. Uh, males have the same. A uh, pair of options, obviously different actors. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, being able to swap between uh, the accents, which are both different exactly. performances, but also different a um, accents. So if you wanted to have that more American sound, mm -hmm. by yeah. default the elves come with uh, British, which is voiced by Alex Wilton Regan. Um, and then uh, if we go to American, it's uh, Sumali Montano. 
Yeah, so uh, you'll notice actually in the game that uh, traditionally uh, people from Ferelden are, have a British accent, uh, Dwarves and Canaries uh, usually have an American accent, and then, well, Orlesians uh, are French. Yep. And no. we've got one of our voice actresses in today as well, in what, later on in the, st in the day with streams, so Absolutely. that'd be cool. Um, also worth noting, uh, some people have asked, like, with, with the elves, uh, tattoos, you always have tattoos because you're a Dalish elf, which is a specific type of elf in the Dragon Age lore. Uh, they always tattoo their faces to kind of show allegiance to one of the elven gods. Mm. That said, you can go down to color, um, and I've seen some people do this in some of the early ones, and get fairly close. I'll just have to... I'm not going to actually try and do it, but you can see you can get closer to skin tones. So yeah. if it's if it's a little too bold for you, a jet yeah. black, then perhaps you can dial that back. No problem. Yep. Um, yep. All right. And then uh, the final thing I wanted to call out, this is one of my favorite features in, that the, the folks got working in the character art team is. So you have, so you, say you have a nice bold scar like that. Um, this is what I'm very happy about is not only can you change sort of its intensity, you can notice it actually deforms around like the eyebrow. It'll change the flow of the hair like it would. Um, yeah. And then if that's not enough, you can move it around the face um, and reposition it accordingly. So, so. you're you happy with your elven female? Oh, I think she looks all right for now. Obviously, I've seen, I've actually seen a few folks have posted some stuff. Where yeah, it's, it's like, gorgeous, right? It's amazing. Yeah. One, uh, it was like totally black and white, super pale, super black, and uh, for the tattoos and the hair. And it was like, yeah, I'm going necromancer. I'm like, yes, yeah, yes, you yeah. are. That's cool. Absolutely. All right, so we're jumping into a, another chunk of the game. I think we're going to go into yeah. gameplay. So I'm going to back out of this. Obviously, um, just me messing around while, while listening to you two chatter. Uh, lots of variety, and of course, you've got eight different combos for your race and gender. So. Yep. Okay, so we're going to jump into the hinterlands. Is that right? Ooh. I believe so. We should do that. Yeah. I mean, I know you guys have seen a lot of uh, hinterlands gameplay uh, with some of the uh, EA Access uh, gameplay that's been going on, uh, but I think it's it's a good it's the first big sort of area that you go to. So, you just, you just push new game again. I did. This is the beginning of the game. Spoilers <laughs> again. That shield is the greatest hero that the world has ever known. Yeah, not the hero. <laughs> it's the hero the camera deserves. And the hero the camera deserves. Oh, yeah. okay. I realized I'm talking to someone you can't hear. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we're being backed up by a crack team. Uh, they're actually talking directly into our ears. So this is something that's kind of new for us. We're getting used to it. Yeah. We no. got who we got back there: Connell, Patrick, and Justin. So Connell, I think, is taking an eye on anything that you're commenting. Any questions? Any questions? Those yep. are going up on the Twitch stream. Yep. I don't know if we're taking any from Twitter, but hey, go for it. Lord knows someone will answer. Patrick is the one talking to our ears, and you can <coughs> hear him, so I can. Your mom, Patrick. Your mom. <laughs> so I can completely slander him, and he can't do anything. Ah, straight into combat. Wow. Uh -oh. Okay. Well, then, if only I had some way I could. Are you gonna oh, wipe on the first? You're gonna. You mean? I'm to... not gonna. Man, I'm not gonna wipe. Come on. Whatever. Whatever. You don't even know. Come on. See, the rogue's got a shield. We're fine. Uh, the tank's down though. That's oh, maybe Cassandra. Bad. Oh no, you guys are good. You're good. We're good All right. Fine. So who have we got in our? Oh party? no, you're not oh. good. Sorry, I lied. All right, who do we have in our party? Let's use Tactical View to find out. So we, we have, have Varric, Jane, Jane apparently, Cassandra, and Solus. Jane Trevelyan, I think. Do we have a human? Yes, we do. Ooh, dual wield. Nice. I still prefer Evelyn Trevelyan. Uh -huh. I'm gonna. That's. So you that's... guys are uh, you guys are talking about weird names right now? So what's that? It's uh, the surname oh, of. Oh yeah, Trevelyan. Oh sorry, is, uh, yes. yes. Oh my gosh, I am going to wipe out. <laughs> Just run away. Okay. Trevelyan is the, is the surname, If I think only if you play a non-mage uh, for a human, uh, it is a noble... No, no, it's your... Oh, you're, you're always... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're just the... Oh! <laughs> oh, now I know where I am. Now I actually know where I am. That's awesome. Okay, okay so Mike, yes. embarrassing us all eh. by wiping on the first combat of the day. Yeah. No, I, so, I, I'm, wait, I'm counting wait, concerns wait, that the game run. is too easy. What's the difficulty set to? I don't know. Felt like hard, but uh, the thing is, so that was a stalker, an enemy archetype, uh, came out, and they actually prioritize fights against, um, when they're fighting, they go against mages and archers whenever possible. Mm -hmm. So he came out of stealth, and I was like, oh, I got this, it's just one guy, right? Yeah, see, there he is, back you can actually stealth, see him yeah. going into stealth. Yeah, I can see him running across. Yeah, this is where I'm like, wishing I had a glyph 
Because there's no better thing than to leave like a fire glyph around your mage and then be like, yeah, come on. Hey, where's that? Uh, come on, buddy. Stalker, where'd you go, Stalker? You got any potions? I don't know. We'll find out. Oh, there he is. I got close enough to spot him. And apparently killed that Fennec. Yeah, you did. Yeah. You. Gonna get, wow. some, get some Fennec ears? Uh, in a minute. In a minute. Yeah. There's some, some priority There's some killing to do. Yeah, that does yeah. feel like hard. Yeah. I could look, I suppose, but really, who has the time? Look at those guys. Look at them. So this actually, it's oh. actually nice. This higher level area than we've played in the Hinterlands before. We start introducing new archetypes as you play through the game. We should probably. Oh well. Okay, that's why no one's drinking any potions. Um. All right. All right. Not Evelyn. So you. Yes. Yeah. It's Jane. Jane. I said Evelyn because it's funny. Um. Is it rhyming? Because rhyming things are hilarious. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> hey. Hey now. Remember, no coffee yet. Yeah, it's pretty. Oh, for the love of <laughs> I suppose I could use this handy dandy disengage oh. ability. You could. And then I can get out of here. And so you'll notice that Mike is quite quickly tr switching between uh, tactical camera and uh, real time. Um, yeah, hey, it's, it's something Run. that's. Um, that sort of developed over time in development. Like yeah. we, we uh, added in the tac cam, and then uh, because Frostbite didn't have. Like the concept of pause for a long time, and then when we added it, added in uh, tac cam, you could just have this little hey, pull. Buddy. You hold down the trigger, right, and just time sort of slows, slowly moves forward. So oh. what we found well, as a consequence, back. people actually go in and out of the tac cam a lot more fluidly than the, than the past games. I'm worse used to skulkers being a little squishier than this. Yeah, yeah. So it's worth noting as well. I mean, obviously the difficulty level is probably on high, but we don't auto scale. Uh, the creatures and the the combat encounters. Yeah, what in the level are you? <laughs> and they they've got a hate on. What level are you, by the way? I don't know. I don't know. Well, Remember, he, you guys just well, gave me a save and said good luck. Yes. Which I appreciate. oh, you should run over to those other guys over those there. Guys, that'll be what could go that'll, wrong? that'll be fine. This will yeah. be good. Welcome to Dragon Age. We're running. <laughs> <laughs> now, you if know you're what? joining us now, this is our marathon simulation <laughs> uh, right. part yeah, of the game. Right. Uh, you're in the lead at the moment. I am. I am sorta in the lead. No, barracks, barracks up front. Oh no! Don't do that. That stops you. Barracks. I don't know where barracks at. That he's, guy is fast. Stalkers are brutal. They are absolutely brutal because they're using. Oh, and you stopped. <laughs> just stopped. You stopped all the embryo. I wanted to jump you, dang root. Yes. All right. I think I'm getting out of here. It's been a while since I've been in this section. Yeah, oh, right, and there's there's that, like, gateway encounter that tells you this is hard. This is here. hard, yeah. So we are in the right. Hinterlands. This is actually, interestingly, one of So you're level the, four. And what level are the stalker there? <laughs> He'd be level, level eight. eight. <laughs> <Yeah>. So, yeah. <laughs> um, All right, uh, then there's only there's only one thing to do. So thank, thank you for joining us. So we've chosen <laughs> to fight an impossibly hard combat. That's good. That's good. I should be able to win this, and... That, now that I'm probably away. Oh, you've got other enemies coming down. Well, let's just see. Yeah, no potions. All right, can I? I'm probably not going to be able to travel because. No, not in combat anyway. Yeah. Yeah, we're locked in here. Hmm. Here's what I will do: is a handy dandy waypoint, so I know where to get out because I'm heading through here. Varrick's in stealth. Good, good call, buddy. Really good call. I'm just gonna... Yeah, this this here is basically the gateway to this area. This is this is one of those areas where you pop in. All right, we should be safe to leave out now, because we're out of the area. Maybe, maybe. There we go. Hey, everybody. All right. <gasps> maybe All right. maybe travel back to your your, your I'm thinking. Inquisition camp. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's talk about a couple core concepts that this demonstrated. One. Uh, you guys we talked about creatures don't scale. Yeah, no yes. auto scaling. <laughs> so Hence if, level eight. If you head in there, it's going to be nasty. Um, as well, uh, healing. Obviously, we have a set of potions. Right now, we're very early in the game. Looks like no, no regen or anything like that, meaning that we don't have any backup way of healing. But at any point, oh, we can back and forth though, which is nice. <laughs> um, at any point though, we can go to our map, um, go to any camp that's been established by the Inquisition, because you do this throughout the game. Um, and in doing so, that is not one you have gone to. Oh, I haven't been there. Well, do you want to go? Do you want to run to that? See if you can get there. And no, I'm still in combat because I okay, right. Oh yeah, because okay. you back flipped. Boom. There. Yeah, combat's a lot more uh, fluid in terms of in and out than it used to be. Uh, let's go to the farms. We've shown the other one a bunch of times. And once you get to camp, you can at any point now uh, automatically rest. Talk to your requisitions. You can also go to your potions. 
Um, let's take this here. Um, if you have any, oh, we don't have any yet. We get regen. Okay. Uh, you can equip them in a, and uh, get Antivan fire and mm -hmm. a jar of bees and all kinds of cool stuff. Change like your party that. here. So yeah. Let's see who yeah. we got. We got. Yeah, we're right at the start. Oh, wait. Yeah, it's definitely right at the start. Lady Insanity, yeah, we didn't get anybody. No, that's fine. Just decided to go fight some level 8 guys. Well, it's, it's early enough there wouldn't be any... Because um, the recruitment phase comes after a big story beat. Ah, that's true. Right, yep. right, right. We're really early. Yep. yep. So I see Cassandra uh, has leveled up as well. Do you want to... I do. Very much. So. So let's talk about level up then. So okay. yes, when you're leveling up, uh, you are using a talent tree, um, like one of these. You start with four, and you can actually everybody ends up at five um, late in the game because you pick up. You get a specialization. Yeah. Well, you don't have to get a specialization as the player. Uh, the could... fo yeah, followers do. Yeah, followers do. Yes. The player gets a little candy for being the. Inquisitor. Oh, that's true. So they actually start with five, don't they? Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, and then go to six. Yeah. Uh, no, it's four at the beginning. Then. Same beat where these guys unlock theirs. So, the um, upgrades available for each ability. So, not just purchasing one, but you can actually make it better. Same cost as if you went down to a new one. Uh, when you're mapping, you can choose to remap to up to eight quick bar buttons um, with rapid access. This, In this case, I'm holding L2, and then I again have all of my face buttons and R1 uh, remappable. Uh, X always remains jump or loot or interact or whatever. So you've built, or Lady Insanity anyway, because uh, this is her save. Is it? Okay. Uh, has built, so basically taking Cassandra down the tank, offensive warrior. Yeah. Not a bad Some call. taunt, exactly, yeah. Now she could be two-handed as well, if you wanted to. That make her true. a very, very yeah. damaging sort of uh, character. So um, this, this is right here, just glancing off this. So um, here, a damage bonus whenever enemies are taunted for the whole party. Mm. Which tells me right now, my immediate first thing I want to buy is Warcry, which is an area of effect taunt. I don't want just one character taunting. I want to pick this up. Adding that, she'll add it automatically to her repertoire. She'll start using it in the middle of battle. Yep. And all of a sudden, we're all doing more damage yep. against the Now, you can stuff. customize which abilities uh, or how the characters use the abilities, whether they, they prefer it or whether they don't use it at all. Yep. You know, do you want to talk about that? Sure. So this is a, a change. In the past, we had sort of a programming language about when abilities were used and stuff. Uh, this time, um, and, and one of the problems with that, I mean, it was very powerful, but it was also very brittle. Mm. Uh, it could break... Um, if you if you put in the wrong thing, basically characters just stop running their AI, and that that was a bit concerning. Um, it was also very very complicated to actually put together and make sure it worked properly. Um, and so we decided to try something a little different this time around, which is being able to set abilities to preferred or to never use, um, and you can also do uh, more global behaviors as well. Um, and these will reserve your stamina, choose where the character is going to be targeting. Will they be following, defending a specific character? Will they go for, uh, oh, okay, always go after Solus. Yeah. Um, how often will I drink healing potions and when do I stop? And when do I drink them? Um, so through these, and then, you, of course, you can turn off tactics entirely and say, no, just only do what I do. That's very common in people that play in TAC Uh Through these... Coupled with the AI being improved, so that uh, abilities like Shield Wall, the character will use intelligently. Hey, mm -hmm. there's a giant attack coming in. I'm actually going to throw up my wall and block it, yep. and then go back to attacking. Uh, or I'm surrounded by guys, and they aren't taunted, so I will war cry. Uh, because I have this ability, which means the player has said, I'm probably a tank. Yep. Um, now, if you, hit the, if you hit uh, the tactical setting there, so you can change it from, you yep, know, I will absolutely. use it all the time, to... Disable entirely, yeah. so that way you can have abilities which you, as a player, you want to swap to that character or go yeah. and attack him and have and have explicit control over yeah. the the execution of that ability, uh, or preferred as well. So that's kind of cool. That's that's the you should be using this whenever. Yeah, possible. absolutely. Uh, yeah. So a good example there is uh, you have a mage who has both a freeze spell for crowd control but and a barrier. You can set barrier to preferred, and they will they will use barrier whenever possible yeah. over that crowd control spell. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot of flexibility in that. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's it's not as, like, it's not quite as powerful as the previous one, but at the same time, it's also a lot less brittle. So, um, seemed a pretty good compromise, one that uh, still offers a fair amount of control as you dig into it and get to know how they use their ability. Yeah, and I think more people will probably use this system. I hope so. Yeah. yeah, that'd be my hope. Yeah. Um, so we are in the Hinterlands. Oh, we've gotten our horse. That's good to know. Uh, Hinterlands is the first big area you're going to come to. Uh, this area is um, uh, sort of medium size, so it's bigger than than all of Dragon Age Origins. 
Um, but uh, we have areas that are actually bigger than this. Um, I, like, yeah. I like how casually you're like, well, it's bigger than that entire game we made <laughs> yeah. six years ago. But anyway, yeah. it's medium size. It's medium size. Yeah. Um, so this area is actually right outside of Redcliffe Village, um, which your people who uh, play Dragon's Origin will be familiar with. So it's a bit more settled than some of other areas. You can see there's a lot of uh, uh, buildings around. Most of them burned out because of the conflict between the mages and the Templars. Um, and uh, also, oh. for anyone who's been playing uh, the EA Early Access on Xbox One, um, you will be able to bring your progress across, obviously, after your 6 hours are finished as well. So. Yeah, it basically makes save right on your machine. Yeah. You just load that save, it, so it that is. character. Uh, also, if you had keep imports built in, that will load across as well. Yep. So, for people so, in the North America and most of Asia, I think that will unlock uh, tonight. And for Europe, I imagine that it's going to unlock on Friday um, when the release happens in Europe on yeah. the 21st. Yeah. Absolutely. So, let's talk about the keep and importing your um, decisions and actions from Origins and Dragon Age 2 into Inquisition. Okay, so um, because of the platform switch and also because of the rather shoddy state of uh, the save games from previous games, uh, we are using the Dragon Age keep. Uh, the Dragon Age keep is designed to build up your choices from Dragon Age Origins, Dragon Age 2. Um, it's actually a beautiful uh, way to do so. Uh, you actually interact with um, a tapestry of choices. You click into them uh, and uh, uh, and make choices and change the way that you basically indicate how you played the previous games. Yeah. Um, when you start up a Dragon Age Inquisition we game, you will have the opportunity to import uh, those choices into your game, and then that's what we reflected uh, in the game. Yep. Uh, so Dragon Age Keep is uh, dakeep.com, right? Uh, Dragon Age Keep. Dragon Age Keep. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Yeah. As well, but if yeah. you've never played uh, a Dragon Age before uh, and want to bone up on the lore, it's not a terrible way to do so. Uh, it's not really designed as an introduction, but it's if you if you give some time to it, um, you can figure out some of the some of the major events of the last ten years or so. One of the uh, one of the parts that is uh, helpful if you're new is there's a, an interactive story summary. So Varric, who just talked, will read through kind of the, the the history of Origins, the history of Dragon Age Two. He'll bring all those elements out, and as he does so, um, what Varric will do is uh, offer moments where you basically can say, "No, no, that's not what happened." Yeah. Um, and change it, and then that will serve as the basis for your world summary. Um, in doing so. Uh, you can you can tweak it, and we actually I think it just went live. I know we just released a video of it. Um, there is the uh, uh, additional element added in just now, where uh, it talks a little bit about the conclave and what happens just before uh, Dragon Age Inquisition. Yep. And I yes. believe you can also share. So once you've set up your your own custom world style, I believe you can share that on like uh, Facebook or Twitter or something like that. And across the keep itself. Yeah. Which it. is really cool. So uh, if any of the devs are actually watching right now, like it'd be pretty cool to have our stuff go out there. I might do that later on because I set mine up about a week ago. Yeah. 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 Mine has uh, mine has Logain as a survivor. Oh which really? Is, which is, I think, a little edgy, Casey. Yeah. yeah. Um, so at this point, uh, who are we? We are not yet the Inquisitor, in fact, at no. this point in the game. No, the, um, the character at this point is known more as the Herald of Andrasse because you seem to have survived a disaster, and people think you might be kind of miraculous. Seem to have survived. Wait. That. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hmm. You've been dead all along. I think that's a really interesting theme that runs throughout the game as well. That concept of uh, people believing you, that maybe you're the sort of uh, savior almost, right? And whether you believe that or not, and, and how you then communicate that to the world um, is, is really quite an interesting concept. So Yeah, and I, I think we recognized um, fairly early on as we started to do this that, that of course players weren't going to want always to, to fall into the role of like religious savior character. Um, and so we said, well, how can we, um, how can we tackle that? And, and the nice thing is our dialogue systems allow us very easily um, to set up world states where, uh, you know, you you have not just said, oh, I I don't uh, I don't believe this, but characters start remembering that later, calling you on it. If you start going back on your words, um, different comments will will come up 